Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our live webinar on Flutter versus Native. Which one should you choose for app development? So right now, like uh, we we will start uh, with the current panelists. A uh, few of them will be joining shortly. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank you everyone for joining us on this exciting journey. I am Vartika Mangal, AVP Tech at Antino Labs. And I will be the moderator for today's insightful session. And I believe that you all will get a chance to dive deep into the world of Flutter versus Native. With our renowned panelists, before we begin, let me quickly remind you, uh, in the end, we will have Q&A session. And you can uh, submit your queries in the chat box as well. And uh, we will discuss with the panelists in the end. So now it's time to meet uh, our panelists who will unveil the future of Letter versus Native with their experience and unlock the potential of uh, one which will bring a wave change in the application development journey. So today we have uh, Sari Ramkota with us who is alumnus of IIT Kharagpur and have over uh, eight years of experience with leading in industries like Swiggy and Navi. He has played pivotal role uh, in the digital transformation that uh, companies have undergone. Currently, he is working as a product architect in Global Apps. He is, uh, it's wonderful uh, how you have been associated uh, with the growth of uh, so many uh, biggies uh, companies in the market. Uh, great to have you here, here, Mr. Sainam. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Radhakant, who is currently the CTO of Andino Labs and an alumnus of IIT Bhuneshwar. He has worked with well known companies such as. Uh, Times Internet, Happy, and Cognizant. He is one of the primary source for diving significant significant business outcome by envisioning technologies plans for the Antino Labs. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Vartika. Yeah. So I would like to uh, inform you that due to some unforeseen reasons. Uh, Mr. Ravi Prasad would not be able to join us today. However, however, Mr. Piyush would be replacing him for today. Uh, he is IVP Tech in Antino. He came across uh, with more than uh, 10 years of work experience, primarily in, primarily in mobile application development. Thank you, Piyush, for joining us uh, on such a thank short you. notice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, we can uh, go ahead uh, with the queries. So, Sairam, we have a query for you. Like, while working in Swiggy, you might have handled multiple products and large teams. And definitely, you might have came across uh, about this topic, like Flutter versus Native. Uh, can you hear, share your thoughts uh, for this topic? Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, so while uh, we were building uh, the products at Swiggy, uh, we have thought about a lot of uh, not only the Flutter, uh, the native versus uh, React native, and also the Flutter. Uh, while uh, we are working on the different features, right? Okay, we have choose uh, native experiences for the consumer applications where uh, it has a uh, beautiful animations and also the performance and also there is no lag in that so and also uh, for applications such as the delivery app where there is a need of uh, over the air updates we have choose uh, react native and and some of the components inside swiggy uh, main configuration we also have the react native components where there's a need of uh, uh, oh there update something uh, if you see time or this right this is the react native and it is embedded in the native application 
and while we are designing this one, right, we came across the multiple options and as a flutter. The reason we haven't gone to the flutter is uh, we don't have the over there updates. That was the yeah. one of the. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, can you repeat? Yeah. Like, why you haven't choose flutter? Okay. Yeah, so because um, we don't have the OZR updates and also the uh, while we are de developing it, right, like one, one and a half year or two years back, at that time the Flutter uh, community was very small and uh, yes. whatever the things are there on the market is not sufficient for us to de develop. We have done the POCs and to test it out how it works for our use cases. That's how we haven't gone towards the flutter direction. Okay. And so we have chosen the React Native for the replacement of that. And oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, like Radhakant and Piyush, do you want to like to add or something in that? Yes. Uh, so even I had uh, similar uh, encounters in the past. So yeah, in my experience, like if you are, if you would have asked me the same question like two or three years ago. Uh, I would uh, straight away uh, like tell you that go for native. Uh, but uh, the way uh, the Flutter has evolved over the years, I mean, especially in the last two years, it's quite fascinating. And uh, I mean, the way it has built up is uh, its libraries and even the community, you can say these days is, uh, is very nice, very nice. And uh, yeah, uh, now it is neck to neck. And of course, it depends on what exactly is the use case and uh, what exactly is the requirement. But yeah, uh, capability wise, I think it's it's stronger than ever uh, Flutter. So yes, of course, native has its own uh, uh, advantages and uh, it has its own, uh, what do you say, the direct link with the kernels and all of the, of the operating system. But yes, uh, Flutter has evolved a lot. Yes, completely. Uh, I also agree. Like, yes, also, uh, since like uh, I have been working mostly in iOS development and also have worked with some projects and some apps on uh, Flutter and also React Native as well. So, yeah, uh, from my, my point of view, yes, I mean, we do have advantages of using native development on the cross platform. But yeah, if you ask me, like, compare to which I will go or which is easier as compared like the implementation wise and also yes, there are few things that are <clears throat> uh, easy or you can say like better to use or uh, better to implement uh, in cross platforms like uh, Flutter and React Native you would say. So in Flutter basically what I found out is like you uh, creating an UI is much more easier than what uh, we use in our iOS development basically where uh, we have to create, uh, I mean, drag and drop things and then uh, uh, link the things and everything. So those things we will be overtaking, I mean, that will be overtaken in, I mean, uh, Flutter development and also in React Native as well. But yeah, <clears throat> if you compare the same like, uh, so in iOS and iOS development and native development, we do in iOS basically we have they have come up with the Swift UI as well, right? So in Swift UI, we, I mean, we right now we don't have to use all the old things that we used to use in I mean, Swift and Objective C. Yeah, so <clears throat> that is the one thing that we uh, we can actually have. But yes, I mean, uh, it all depends upon what the requirement is, what the features requirements are, and also. Then, I mean, if we, we are working with the clients and everything, so it's also, it depends on what the client requirement as well is. Yes. So this, this topic, uh, it, it is quite controversial, we have to say, because yes. Uh, yes. I have known people fighting over this and I, I, there are people still don't, who don't speak with each other. This is a funny <laughs> fact, by the way, who, who still don't speak with each other because of this topic. It all depends on what is their use yes. cases, what tools yes. better for them. And when it comes to <laughs> cons, every, uh, every technology has their own pros and cons. 
and if Correct. that cons is not uh, impacting you and it's best way to leverage that because one yeah. code base can be used and which can work uh, across platforms not only Correct. standard I right it's the best right. part. yes yes exactly and hot reload and which are hot reload and other features which are missing in the native platform development yes. which is also better Correct. for the faster development Correct. exactly yes and uh, i think it is uh, flutter supports till uh, 60 fps 60 frames per second so that should be more than enough for the human eye to uh, i mean it does not feel any difference these days yes um, i mean if you want to give the best experience like some gaming uh, apps and all uh, even 60 fps is quite visible i mean the change is quite visible and uh, so in those cases you might go for native but the regular use case definitely i think flutter is far better uh, uh, in as you have mentioned hot reload and all yes there are there are advantages of course mm. yes okay so radhakant i we have a question for you how do you approach the decision decision making process for cho choosing a between flutter and native for a new project yes uh, okay if for a new project of course uh, it depends on lot of things uh, right from uh, you can say uh, the budget of uh, i mean i'm i'm telling in a client's perspective mm -hmm. okay uh, i mean because lot of clients uh, when uh, when they approach us with their requirement many of them are technical some of them are non technical so yeah it it uh, of course uh, it depends entirely on the requirement and uh, and the exact feature what they want to develop so uh, yeah if if it is a, a general uh, requirement like a social media application or uh, a, a small fitness application so i would definitely suggest uh, to go with uh, flutter uh, the reason being as as saira mentioned a few few minutes ago like uh, you have lot of features to offer and more importantly it is uh, like uh, you can say kind of budget friendly because you get uh, almost uh, the apps developed in two platforms two or even multiple uh, with with an effort that is slightly more than uh, the cost and effort that that would be consumed in developing for uh, one one platform one native platform so it is more slightly more but uh, of course that that gamble is uh, always uh, i mean we should be ready to take that and uh, yes other uh, than that of course there are uh, there are some people uh, who 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 are okay with spending more money and they want the best to be given to their customers in those case of course we we always go with native but yes with people with some constraints and uh, i mean feature wise it is all the same these days if 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 you have to uh, spot out a, a difference where native overcomes uh, uh, the flutter you can say some some related to the device capabilities wherein you want to use the gps of the device or some advanced camera feature where you want to speak directly with i mean the application want to speak directly with the device component in those cases yes the apis are not available in flutter uh and of course we have to go with the native so other than that it is all the same yeah okay so uh, sairam what is your views because like in swiggy we are using map too extensively and other features like uh, we use so extensively so how like uh, how you approach uh, those feature while developing Uh, so in terms of in in while we were while I was working at Swiggy, right? Uh, we choose uh, uh, let's say if it is a consumer application, right? We choose the best performance and also the best user experience with respect to the device. Let's say I was use a Swiggy, I was kind of an animation, I was kind of a smooth transition. These kind of things uh, the native by default provides. and something the flutter and this thing right they try to mimic the behavior but it will not be similar behavior what you get it with the uh, native experience and one thing what we have chosen while we are working across the future right okay uh, it also depends on the how much time we have to deliver and what is the uh, minimum 
performance guarantee and also when it comes to the maps and these things right we have to reload a lot of things okay and when you have to reload the things and you have to use a lot of uh, internet details of the maps one to draw animation of the delivery boy and also to keep a positioning some small use cases right the flutter and the other have the use cases but when it comes to the uh, something like the extensively drawing on the map and positioning the delivery boy and a lot of other things right those are little complex uh, while using with the flutter and other even with the react native as well we have written our own wrappers uh, to yeah. make it work uh, for that and wherever uh, we have choose uh, uh, react native right it is for our use cases uh, where it it helps in both the platforms to speed up and also we have used in some places the web use which will speed up the where the content uh, get refreshed uh, and the layout gets changes and those kind of use cases they have it so that's where we have a mix of uh, react native native web view and those kind of technologies right understood yeah uh, also you might have uh, uh, dealt with uh, large teams and all as a as an architect so so you you might be facing some challenges in, so can you just shed some thought there like uh, yeah. how, how how is it different managing a native team versus uh, like some some cross platform team working on two two different platforms delivering stuff to yeah. two different platforms yeah all right so one one challenge is uh, comes with the cross platform say something like let's say the operating system has released uh, let's say ios release new version of it and or release some different version but uh, some of the things are not working properly in the this platform side right, with the cross platform side right? the issues comes with that and we had to wait for the platforms to be like flutter or react native right they had to release a patch for these versions and get it uh, work and after that we had to release a new version of it that is a one problem with the cross platform technologies because it it has to catch up every now and then with the operating system uh, if you see right most of the time there will be a delay of uh, the 3 4 months kind of a thing because it has to be gone through the uh, testing across the versions and all those things right for right. the uh, cross platform to be released out. so this these are the small issues you will be facing it while you are working on and some of the details will be issues like uh, on android and particular version okay this cross cross platform uh, was not working properly or some widget is not working properly and it is very difficult to debug and because it is a uh, this one right very big platform right it is very difficult yeah. to debug those kind of issues okay when it is a native right you can have the lot of other ways to debug it. you know where to go and debug it when you are dealing with the react native or the flutter right you don't know uh, how the communication internal communication happens right those kind of uh, difficulties comes with the cross platforms correct debugging exactly. the cross platform technologies is little difficult to so the issue at native and other things right right okay so like now we also have rishikesh and uh, prem dharman with us so i will uh, brief you the introduction about uh, them so Uh, Prem Dharmani is like alumnus of IIT Madras uh, with over eight plus experience. He has very impressive track record uh, of designing product and creating a uh, value for uh, various top notch industries like Vibebo and uh, uh, MPL. He brings compelling brand and of a strategic, strategic and product allocation discipline and transformational leadership abilities. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Prem and. Uh, your valuable insight would would be very helpful uh, for the audience thank you thanks vartika for the introduction yeah so now Hello. i like yeah. to introduce uh, mr rishikesh who is co-founder and cto at rapido so you are you all might be knowing how rapido is uh, 
using ahead and creating a difference in transportation industry. So thank you for joining us and impressive work, Mr. Rishi. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Artika. Uh, and uh, happy to be part of this. Would share. Would like to share my insights. That, that's... Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. To have you. Okay, so like we were discussing like uh, how uh, like in the Swiggy, like uh, uh, what happened like uh, for the teachers, they have used uh, React Native as cross, uh, cross, pla cross platform and native also for the some teachers. So we were discussing that. So do you want, do you want to add something in that? Mr. Rishi. Yeah, I could take that. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, possibly, I think um, native versus um, uh, what is that? Any sort of other cross-platform. Uh, I mean, there were too many actually uh, at the time when we were about to take this decision, right? So it there was uh, things like Xamarin, React. And and so many else that I couldn't remember name as well. Cordova. Right? So, yeah, correct. Cordova, right? Yeah. So the uh, also Angular was supposed to be yes. that. Anyway, uh, I mean Google internally had multiple products or multiple teams competing with themselves to be that particular alternative. Yeah, uh, but in the recent days, uh, uh, the things are a lot more different. But I mean, uh, rather back then, maybe around 2014 or 15, this the this is uh, go towards uh, the conversation or I mean, the decision was a lot more straightforward, at least for an utility company like Rapido, where speed matters the most, right? Yes. Um, uh, because um, I mean, uh, you are uh, you are out of a cricket stadium, it's the IPL season going on. Soon after you come out of the stadium, you, you, you want to take a drive back to your home and every second that's late is actually, uh, I mean, uh, the rendering, uh, if it takes a bit more time, people get frustrated to go to mm -hmm. another app and the competition is intense like, you know, right? So uh, we had to, had to uh, keep our technology top notch or rather the experience top notch. And so uh, given, uh, also added to that is the SDKs, right? So uh, all of the map based SDKs were, lot more a uh, uh, lot more uh, friendlier or rather uh, were compatible to most of the uh, most of the devices in native but uh, it lacked the support or uh, the development push required from the other side uh, for the other platforms right so back then the concept was i mean the things was easy yeah that's how we made addition to go towards native and hence we have uh, iOS team and Android team separate even today. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe you could speak of how that changed the uh, later. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, I remember uh, Rishi created the first Rapido app. I was there that time with him. So yeah, he himself uh, coded and he created the application that time. The first mm -hmm. Rapido application. Nice. Okay, uh, so uh, what is your views uh, about this team? So regarding uh, this Flutter in the native, we have been debating. I have seen across multiple companies where uh, initially my journey even started with Guai Bigo Make My Trip, uh, when they were also planning for a cross platform stuff. And at that point of time, I think the native elements were there. And in India, uh, what you see the iOS as a platform from the user perspective, it started gaining growth after 2015. Uh, where a lot many iOS users started basically increasing up. And that's where uh, initially the iOS uh, users were given an experience of a PWA. What what I see in a while hotel booking or a, a flight booking at that point of time by Make My Trip and the Kuwait Bigo uh, in the initial days. So they were trying to basically make up at that point of time and they were looking out for a technology that could basically serve seamlessly across Android and iOS. So uh, they then took a decision to move to a React Native kind of a platform. Uh, and obviously, React Native was new at that point of, point, that point of time. 
so uh, there i i could see some decisioning point happening for the cross platform part and then when i started working with mpl mpl also same debate came in and that point of time flutter was not there so the obvious decision was basically with the native uh, people were like okay uh, there are multiple sdks so game actually works in a way that you have unity games you have html type of games so uh, obviously the uh, react native was a technology which was very uh, prominent at that point of time so they took up the decision to take it react native and uh, serve the users both android and ios but again uh, at the react native uh, the kind of technological experience what i hear from the tech people who have worked uh, they seem to be now moving to a flutter because flutter is the new edge which has come up in the last two years the kind of community which has grown uh, grown so far and uh, given from the gaming part what i have seen dream 11 also has moved completely from a native experience to a uh, flutter experience and uh, they are serving like a uh, uh, 10 million concurrency on a daily basis in this ipl uh, what's the kind of data what i see so uh, as as we grow uh, what i see is basically flutter coming up into the uh, gaming development and uh, especially the kind of interfaces it is helping uh, one of all is basically cross platform obviously is there but uh, the core gaming happens in unity or unreal kind of engine which is not right now on the flutter on any kind of cross platform offering is not there so people are basically making a bridge between a cross platform thing and basically the unity so flutter is right now being actively used out into the gaming industry mm -hmm. and given the kind of proof point it has given from the dream 11 that okay 10 million concurrent users it is able to serve with a very uh, mild speed because uh, as a fantasy user if you see uh, in the last 30 minutes when the lineups are out at that point of time everyone will come and start creating the teams key boss i have to create a team so rendering at a high speed at a high accuracy is pretty important and uh, that i think with the flutter uh, people are able to achieve it and uh, with react native that was a bit laggy and uh, native obviously it was best but handling the different codes uh, feature releases like uh, differently for the native differently uh, differently for android differently for ios uh, that was a laggy point for many organizations uh, to provide the value proposition to users a bit late ios usually people take the roadmap lately like they take okay android first karte hai, mm -hmm. then we will take the ios roadmap uh, it will follow up the roadmap right so that has basically shif uh, shifted and uh, from technology cost point of view and even uh, as a product manager like uh, shipping one feature in one go that's pretty important and uh, that helps up so yeah that has been the view that has been the journey and even uh, when we are right now looking out for a gaming application so flutter is the key go to product right now uh, choice for us uh, naturally for now yeah. okay do you want yeah. to add anything anyone uh, so yeah okay okay yes rishi please so uh, I could add on to this uh, because recently we revisited this decision and uh, actually we want to see, hey, uh, can we use Flutter mainstream in Rapido, right? Uh, because we decided to rewrite the entire app from scratch uh, to kick the legacy code out. Um, yeah. And and if you, I mean, a lot of the logic, uh, I mean, app side logic or the real time logic uh, lies in, in the inside inside app than the server, right? So hence, um, to rewrite this particular thing, we had to revisit the decision again, right? So we developed a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, now, uh, I mean, back then, when first time we took the decision, maybe there were only a few people, four or five people there, right? But now we are in hundreds. Uh, yeah, when, when we looked at, hey, could we take this up again and start uh, building the app in Flutter? we did do a POC as well to try out to see uh, if it works, right? Um, uh, the few highlights of that were, were that one of, one thing that was more evident was the app size, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it, I mean, uh, in, in iOS, it doesn't matter. Uh, iPhone users have enough space, so it doesn't matter at all. But for Android, for, for our target audience, which tier two and tier three of India that uh, we, would, we would cater to, Right, so uh, the RAM as well as the, uh, uh, I mean, the storage is still an issue, 
right? Uh, I mean, in tier one, uh, maybe in your phone or our phone, we don't see, uh, see that to be a problem anymore. Maybe it was a problem four or five years ago, but it's still a uh, huge problem in tier two, tier three audiences. Um, and hence, um, what is that? The SDK, uh, I mean, so, so the uh, after install size of the app increased towards up, upwards of 20 MB with all the optimizations for the basic code. Um, and, and hence it was a no, no for us, right? It was a straight no, um, because even though, uh, for parts of it, we could uh, reduce the time, uh, where we duplicate our efforts, uh, writing for Android, writing for iOS, uh, they're using, I mean, maybe we could, we could have optimized that, but, um, at this point of time, we restricted to web being a lot more lighter in weight, uh, for those, uh, common components in nature and for the other ones we came back to uh, native and we are we are rewriting the app which might go live in next uh, next month or two actually nice. I, I mean if uh, if any guys of you are interested uh, please let me know I'll, I'll send you a beta epic as well to find out more <laughs> yeah, sure. nice. okay yeah I, I think this is the other way around in the gaming industry right so usually the unity applications are so heavyweight so <laughs> Uh, the flutter becomes a lightweight application later, right? Same? Correct, correct. So mm -hmm. flutter, rather than what we have seen is basically uh, a Unity application, uh, let's say a 500 MB application, a user might not install at the first end. Uh, so what people do is basically uh, make, make them install a flutter application where they will give them the experience into the gaming that, okay, this is the kind of game. Uh, or even the home page of the game is being designed into the flutter and rest where the actual gameplay happens yeah. then then that's where they in invoke unity and the assets for the first time a user has to install so so that uh, intended user is basically is being captured and uh, unnecessary user doesn't drop off with seeing a 500 mb install happening on a play store uh, unless until it's a game like a PUBG where people are like <laughs> ready to die to basically <laughs> install one GB, two GB kind of a game. But uh, even for the hyper casual games, what I see is the average uh, size has increased in, on the Unity aspect because the kind of graphics uh, which is basically uh, almost coming up and uh, this AI stuff coming up. So people are using generative AI to create the avatars and all that. So they are heavy in the graphics. So uh, Flutter is basically right now helping them to get the user first approach and initially get with a lower size APK size, people easily install and then they explore that, okay, any asset I have to install or any, any other Unity or Unreal Engine if I have to install. So that installation happens beside the game. Yes. And the last time when we were speaking, I remember uh, just uh, including a social login uh, uh, SDK itself takes around uh, some, some 600 or 700 MB of additional space in a Unity application. Just adding a social uh, login uh, plugin. Uh, so yeah, it is heavy, but yes, as you told, there are workarounds everywhere. Yes, yes. Uh, I've also been uh, working with uh, <clears throat> PW, uh, Physics Wala. So here, uh, they're also uh, basically they are using the native application. It's on native development itself. So the issue there, what they found out is because, I mean, they have to go, go to the, I mean, uh, the students, the rural areas, the students where people might will have, I mean, lesser, I mean, devices, memory and everything. So in that also, they preferred using, uh, I mean, uh, the iOS or the native development on top of the uh, Flutter anyway. And uh, also like with uh, the, uh, new, uh, they have data they came up with. Uh, so right now with iOS development thing, uh, most of the people are, or most of the students are using the old devices. I mean, the iPhone, iPad devices where the memory is actually very less. So in that, like, uh, it's because of that also they, they, they have come up with this, that way. So they'll be using the native um, okay. rather than using the, uh, yeah, the cross platform. Uh, yes, 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 yeah. Zaira, do you want to add anything in this? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, so one uh, issue with the flutter uh, for the low end, 
hardware is something like flutter apps generally use more a uh, lot of cpu and gpu resources and uh, when it comes to the low end uh, hardware devices like an android right okay it can have a performance impact that's uh, one of the issue with that while developing the flutter based application so it depends on what is their use case and which is better uh, the use case and if it, the cons are also applicable or good for them right they can also use that that and i would like to add like a question to sairam to you as, as well like uh, what are the challenges like you faced uh, when uh, like you are transferring your code to like cross native platform a uh, react native what are the like major challenges you faced you mean for the migration yes yes for the migration yeah. so uh, while designing the migration you kind of okay so we don't uh, generally uh, let's say if you want to migrate uh, the whole app into the react native or the any kind of a technology even it is an a2 which will uh, while you are going from the swift to swift ui or even uh, something like the uh, cross platform for the logic sharing kind of thing like uh, the kotlin native and this thing right okay what uh, we follow it or i follow it is something like what while you are uh, working on some new project like right, new uh, products right try testing it out and we start from there and while there is a gradual changes in that kind of a product right we work on that uh, with the latest technologies and slowly use it in the main app and have a migration kind of a thing into the newer technologies because uh, rewriting the complete application doesn't make sense uh, when it comes to the user right okay and let's say there is an already an existing application okay if you change it from the native to the react native or any flutter right for the user it doesn't make any difference for him that what it is saying it and how it is able to order and all the things it matters okay for, for the what how we choose or i choose basically like while you are working on a new project or new products new development in the right road map better use those technologies and use it and find uh, what are the pros and cons some of the cons you don't even uh, see it while you do it on the pvcs and this kind of a project right so until you release it and into, into the production while right you will get to know like what of the issues coming with the low end hardware devices and low end devices and also some users which have the low ram right okay those users might have an impact those kind of things we observe it something like a while we are in swiggy right we observe everything what is the load time what is how much time it takes for the screen to render how much time for the first time to interact the application right we track all those performance metrics and we see which is uh, making major differences in terms of the cost and also in terms of the resources and also in terms of the app performance that's how we decide whether we should go forward with that technology or not. so okay right. so uh, dream like uh, how dream 11 is completely transferred uh, to flutter and like so, what uh, so dream 11 uh, the key decision what i hear from the folks is basically uh, initially they were doing a native separate uh, i would say separate developments and uh, where uh, they were looking that okay native may they shift one feature and ios users since uh, see ios users are very premium premium users for them uh, an average ticket size for an android user may be for one game ipl game might might be 100 to 100 rupees but for an ios user uh, the average ticket size was around 1000 to 1000 rupees and uh, shipping any feature late into the ios was costing them a lot because that's where your high ticket size users are there right so they that was the key point for them to basically decide upon that let's do a cross platform thing uh, and uh, again it's a lightweight uh lightweight application what they were referring to and uh, since a dream 11 kind of a gameplay it doesn't require a very immersive kind of a gaming experience right it's a more of a transactional like on, how on swiggy or flipkart uh, you basically uh, see the things right 
so that's where they decided to okay let's shift to uh, a technology and flutter is basically flutter came at that point of time had a good synergy out uh, so that's where they decided to okay uh, to take up the flutter as an experience and uh, develop the develop the ecosystem out so that was a key decision point what i hear from the folks who, who have worked at dream 11 and uh, since mpl had basically what i see at mpl still react native is being uh, used up but few elements they have started moving out with the flutter and uh, flutter as a community is growing up so that's a kind of future envisioning i am i'm seeing that many of the apps especially into the gaming who are starting something like a fantasy or a simple prediction kind of a gaming platform uh, will easily move to the flutter and flutter will be the first choice for them to develop it out right i agree to the prince point here i think for uh, if somebody is starting new or rather it's it's a mvp that they are trying to uh, look for and uh, try to test out the water if if their product would work or not i think they should go towards uh, a, a, a cross a cross platform thing um, because i mean it's easier to test between the platforms and also test faster um uh, i mean if if at all they have a single code base so that they need not worry about managing the errors in in two cases i mean two different uh, ways and all of it and also they need to craft the experience differently for uh, if 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 they are building native it uh, most likely you will end up crafting different experience for different um, uh, i mean ios and android right so uh, to reduce the complexity and actually test the product out it's the great way to start uh, with 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 flutter i think it's it's more uh, depends upon who, who the end um, uh, consumers are and what uh, what they would value right um, and also what would make more sense at that point of time um, uh, is is where we'll need to take the decision maybe i've generalized uh, a lot but yeah that's that's what it means yeah i i agree exactly that that is what i mean it is all about uh, uh, how much time and how much effort you are willing to put and for for what exactly i mean who is the target audience and uh, yeah i mean uh, there are some differences of course that uh, both of both of them give uh, like uh, as as i told you earlier uh, the, the the rendering engine and all those things of course they they come into and they they make the experience seamless but still if if you want that pixel perfect thing that you want to give to the customer and suppose some features like swipe to go back and all i mean uh, the users can clearly tell the difference yes this is not uh, built in native and this is not the perfect uh, yeah. thing so yeah. and so then, and one difference here is i think the material 3.0 uh, which uh, which exactly. released very recently yes. have yes. have a greater support for flutter as well right and and that's promising given it's coming from google directly that's for sure promising but we don't know till when it would last or when uh, when google will plug the uh, <laughs> what is it <laughs> uh, plug it out uh, flutter uh, like what facebook did for react right so yes, yes that's true like in the starting like i would like to add one thing like in the starting when flutter started then uh, the rendering engine was called like 120 fps but like now they reduce it to 60 so like they are continuously working on the speed as well so i have a question like related to that because like if uh, uh, like the uh, usability like user experience will increase in terms of screen rendering then uh, can you think like uh, flutter in future flutter can uh, replace uh, unity uh, for the game development so what think unity Yeah, unity. Ah, uh, so ah, uh, I think and from a gaming part, I think ah, uh, Unity is more bit experience in a deeper way, where ah uh, we have seen that okay, it is more animation friendly and all that. So that ah, uh, I think ah, uh, uh, it's a bit difficult since Flutter is basically making it's a universal approach. What I see, ah, uh, uh, It has it is like a one one size pockets which fits all everyone every kind of app app cases. Uh, Unity is specific to the gaming. Uh, what I what I see, so there will be not completely shift. I would say there will be some animations which would come into the Flutter, which would allow smaller games to be built up very quickly. Yes. Uh, not the deeply immersive cases, and the kind of integration what I see is that Flutter and 
community basically kick in and that integrate cross promotion in integration from the front end part i think that would be smoother uh, that is my viewpoint but it still uh, depends how uh, flutter is basically looking towards if they want to venture into the gaming i think they might also develop a specific section which would look like a unity or a unreal engine that development will work in that aspect Anyone uh, would like to add anything in that? Uh, so basically, Unity is one kind of a platform for the ecosystem of the users that people in the same I think as Prem said, told us, it is specific to the gaming kind of engine. Okay, when it comes to the Unity and this engine, right, they give a lot of flexibility towards. Uh, adding a component and all those things very easily. But uh, when it comes to the Flutter, right, you have to add it by yourself. Okay. This engine doesn't pro, uh, by default provides all of those things. That's a... Correct. Okay, so Radha Khan, like I have a question for you, like uh, which type of uh, projects and which type of client requirements like you were sure that we have to go with flutter only and in the some cases you choose like we have to go for the native <laughs> uh, to answer in a funny way i can say uh, wherever the developers are available i'll go with that <laughs> but yeah to be, to be frank no no that is that uh, usually again uh, it should be based on the requirement it should be uh, based on totally what exactly the i mean what is the outcome that the client is expecting so if uh, as i told you earlier in this call itself uh, it all depends on the effort and time that he is re uh, ready to uh, put in so i mean uh, if if they are okay with spending a bit higher and giving them an experience giving the giving their customers an experience uh, a, a premium experience i mean to say so then, of course, I would uh, definitely suggest uh, to go with native because, uh, I mean, uh, even Flutter these days, uh, it is it is catering to almost uh, like more than 90% of the use cases that we are getting. Coming into the statistics, yes, more than 90% of the use cases that we get can be built both on Flutter or uh, on a native platform. It does, does not make uh, any difference for those kind of things. But yes, uh, it, it again depends on uh, purely the client's uh, requirement, exactly what what he's willing to pay uh, and what he's willing to uh, invest in. That's it. And uh, what is his final requirement? And uh, yeah, even, even uh, I mean, uh, this is a technical point that I want to add. Uh, that if if even if there is no support for a part because this is the complaint that most of the people do that there is no support for some specific libraries for Flutter or specific SDKs in the Flutter, so there is always a way to uh, add those things in the in the native part of the Flutter application. Vartika, you will be knowing it, but yes, yes, I know. So yeah, so this provision is always there. So yeah, if you ask me. Uh, right now, Flutter is winning. Yeah, so like, is, uh, I'm also like winning. from Flutter background. So like uh, there was like some cases like uh, in which like I got stuck and I started like uh, uh, like uh, when Flutter community was not that much great. So at this at that time, like there was no solution for the like uh, a very basic problem. And in like right now, like in the web application development, in the Windows application development, there are some libraries, they are uh, supporting for the Android and iOS for the mobile development, but they are not supporting for the Windows and web. So for that, what you need to do, you need to write a native code so that it can work in Flutter. So yeah, that has to be done at every time. Yes, like and uh, one of the clients I worked for, so there, there was a total shift in their approach and a single code base approach was uh, taken. So uh, no matter it is a website or an iOS application or an Android application, they wanted to build in Flutter. That's it. Uh, end of, uh, uh, so they, their approach actually was successful. We, we built uh, a single code base application that catered to iOS, Android and web, all the three. 
so of course there yes rishi you wanted to ask something yeah. so uh, another uh, what is it uh, another thought is that dart as a language is still not yet mainstream uh, so that uh, i mean uh, for larger uh, for a larger application uh it it is not the obvious choice there right so uh, uh for a niche app or rather if you are i mean if you are new to uh, app development if you want to start something uh, today i think going with flutter is no brainer in my opinion right um but if if at all you you are uh, if you are touching anything that uh, maybe uh, uh maybe which caters to millions of people Uh, i think problems are in both ways right uh, one is uh, technically managing this uh, with i mean the, i think uh, all of the people here would relate to that in terms of uh, managing the talent inside the organization and specifically finding that uh, niche people who could who could uh, do it in dart and actually scale it up have enough expertise to deal with that is is a huge challenge right along with that is i think uh, while on the other hand um, the hot reload is one such feature where where flutter uh, i mean uh, would, i mean is constructed by default right so it comes by default wherein uh, it we, we would need to do a lot of uh, um, we need to do the hardship in the in the jetpack world or the android world right so i think uh, both have um uh, pros and cons by default um <laughs> but yeah more i mean speaking uh, to the point about game gaming i think um uh, what i believe or rather uh, i mean I've contemplated this multiple times to and and uh, looked at it uh, what i finally believe is that if at all uh, google actually mainstreamly adopts flutter is when it it'll, it'll start becoming easier just like what apple did for swift right uh, maybe 8 uh, years ago or 6 years ago as well uh, there were a lot of uh, apps with objective c but today you hardly see any app being built or even the old apps uh, in objective c anymore right so that transition was pretty sweet uh, uh, with with objective c to uh, swift i think that's what uh, is the is a key element uh for us to see uh, a lot more mainstream adoption right totally agree yes okay so like uh, uh, this is the common question like to everyone like what do you think uh, like what will be the future of flutter okay um, okay i'll i'll take it first so uh, if you ask me of course i i won't say that uh, native will die and it will be flutter everywhere but uh, yes as as rishi pointed out if google supports it more and uh, i i see flutter uh, as the as the go to go to uh, option for anyone who is building uh, who wants to build an application or try out something and of course for larger applications and uh, where where the user experience and all are key so i think it is native always but yeah if you ask me i think there is a very very bright future for flutter and uh, it was bright the last two years definitely and it will be more bright according to me sairam what is your views on that yeah uh, see uh, it, it all depends on pros and cons of the technology what you choose it and even if it is uh, they don't go with the complete mainstream towards it right they can have a small component or the small product or a small module on flutter as well okay? that's not a problem as well okay and if they want if a company chooses something like uh, a small part of a, a poc or uh, trying to test it out if that works or not right okay they can have a small module and also they can integrate with that if you see right the bigger organizations right they hardly try to rewrite the application they gradually rewrite the
time to write a complete application, smaller uh, fashion, smaller modules, and try to go with that and see uh, see how it works as well. Because if someone starts with a new application, right, they they might think about like uh, the scaling. It's a uh, when you're scaling it to a different use cases, right? Which uh, Flutter has a road blocker, right? Okay, you have to choose them. Right? So something, uh, these kind of a technologies also provide something like the communication between the native and this one, right? So that way they can balance out the, some of the features uh, between the native and the Flutter one. That way, uh, I feel like, um, if you see right okay when it comes to the native kind of technologies right where you want to share the code between android and ios right kotlin multi-platform is another good thing that is also coming up in the if you see right it is also beta approved beta re released right okay and it also supports something like the logical sharing between the applications and which actually converts a kotlin into the objective c code right so which doesn't compromise any performance impact or any kind of thing so this cross platform technology keeps coming up and it takes a share from the native as well. And it also depends on what the uh, particularly component or the module, right? They choose it and go for it. Okay. And I think uh, pure Flutter apps will also come into the picture based on their use cases. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is your view on uh, Rishi on this? Right. So uh, I think uh, Flutter is is for sure more promising because I mean uh, it has it has taken off a lot of challenges that the compatibility issues that we use uh, that the native faces uh, dealing with uh, the older versions of uh, Android has has taken off from that particular layer of um uh, the code right so i think that's uh that also uh means that testing uh is already a bit more easier in flutter than the native and it will continue to um uh, continue to be easier than the native right so that's a huge um, uh huge place because huge place for mainstream adoption because uh I mean, a lot of the organizations have testing uh, or QA as a function, um, uh, which is huge and depended upon the native, uh, uh, oh, I mean, native functionalities of the app and all of it, right? So, and hence, uh, that would become a lot more easier as we go. And maybe that's also an push towards um, more adoption to Flutter. Uh, and and uh, for, for newer apps and MVPs, I think it's a no brainer in my opinion, right? Uh, but but for larger adoption is where are the legacy ones uh, and and you don't see any bank adopting it anytime soon. Uh, of course, no, uh, no I mean, nothing against banks, but yeah, that they are the last to adopt in the, in the in the technology world. Uh, yeah. Okay, what is your view uh, frame on that? So uh, in the future of Flutter, what, what I see is basically uh, overall, if I talk about the product development life cycle, right? So you start with the feature, then you have a feature rolled out to the dev team and basically dev team builds up the thing feature and then testing, basically testing team tests out. So uh, complete product life cycle for shipping up a feature, if any technology, uh, namely Flutter or native, it's basically uh, if Flutter is basically moving towards reducing it and uh, helping to ship easily uh, with a uh, with a lower bandwidth of the resources which are required for the testing, it's a uniform testing across uh, the Android and iOS. I think that is the future where uh, the Flutter would basically adoption will definitely kick in, and it will be cost friendly for the organization and the faster shipping uh, which will happen. Uh, as rightly said by Rishi, MVPs are basically the key thing. Startup adoption, uh, startups adopting to it very easily is basically uh, what people are looking to. And even in the bigger, larger organizations, wherever the new developments are being planned up. So that I think would be taken up with the Flutter parts because uh, the availability of technical 
expertise would come in uh, in the part uh, the other part flutter what i see the key improvement area where they are working upon is uh, mainly the native niche use cases of the native application right as example like a live stream so many of people and uh, i see many of people developing uh, uh, the live streaming kind of component in the native because uh, these cross platforms they don't provide that kind of experiences so that experience improvement with the native native part is basically what flutter will be doing in the future what i foresee and i think that would lead to a massive adoption across and uh, as rightly said by uh, sai and basically rishi in the terms that okay in the uh, google basically if if uh, forces in the future and uh, adopts to basically uh, forces their applications to go into the flutter part uh, with their integrations uh, i think that would help up because play store what i see is right now play store especially into the gaming domain what they are doing is uh, as a user any game whatever level you have reached they are storing it natively so if you see from play store wise and it, it will count what kind of games you have played and uh, what is the levels you are up to and uh, what is the leaderboard what is the ranking you achievement you have done in each and every game so uh, that kind of uh, user tracking across multiple apps i think that will be the future where play store will be providing uh, insights that if if let's say so, uh, if i have ordered from swiggy zomato or multiple uh, e eateries so how many times i have ordered how much i have spent those kind of functionalities personalized functionalities i think google is working on the play store front so with the flutter adoption towards the applications i think that will be very easy and uh, that will make user friendly much more user friendly and user intuitive in terms of the uh, adoption of uh, this part so that's a future i foresee uh, from the flutter development uh, organizations taking up in that that aspect and uh, uh, seeing that okay uh, it it will be easy to develop and especially generative ai and the no code solutions being coming up in the current part so building and launching application would be much more easier uh, i foresee with flutter uh, coming up uh, with the new 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 things yeah yeah adding to that uh, flutter is actively investing in uh, i mean uh, augmented reality and all all those new things as well so yeah there is a, there is a future there i mean uh, it is it is having some real good opportunity there yeah another key parameter that i see would uh, help or rather uh, um, affect the adoption of flutter is open source adoption right or rather um, uh, i think this has worked out well for react native and hence it is still alive frankly even though facebook doesn't uh, work on it or rather uh, um, promote it anymore right um, mm -hmm. e even then it's still alive is only because of open source open source um, uh, uh, way of how react uh, uh, what is that evolved from a particular point of time i think that's will also be a, that will also be a key adoption i mean key parameter uh, to to make it easy for for newer developers to adopt it right because they'll always i mean given uh, native has is the i mean ha, there'll be an um, difference in in time uh, always i mean flutter has to play the catch up game um, it it will more depend upon uh, how many how, how much more open source as uh, uh, i i mean um our open source uh, projects that are out there right which which will which will make it better right for example one uh, very famous uh, open open uh, app is telegram right the android code base is available and i'm sure a lot of lot of people would have already looked into it right so uh, and learned a lot about it in terms of uh, the the way to i mean i i at least i personally uh, did that uh, learned a lot from telegram open source code code base apart from google's open source code base right so uh, i think similarly i think we will need more examples that need to be shown uh, i mean um, and and mainstream companies making it open source is a huge boost frankly uh, which i think few of the companies uh, did there i think a uh, lot of the us companies do that but indian companies maybe not so much right so i think that's uh, that will play a role 
uh, in deciding the future of it. So what is your view, uh, Piyush? So, <clears throat> okay, so we yeah, are... Uh, so I being mostly uh, worked with the iOS development is so yes, uh, what I could see is yes, a flutter of future is actually bright right now. I mean, uh, compared to the, the native development, obviously with the cost, cost affecting uh, things and also the uh, main, I mean, the new uh, things that they are coming up with. Yes, so uh, obviously like uh, it's its way to go with the flutter, yes. So I can yeah. consider it like if I have to start a, a new business or I have to make a new app. So I in, in the starting, I can go with the Flutter and I can check my user experience. And if something is lacking and according to that, I can decide like I have to go uh, and write this feature for the native only. Right. Right. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I think Prem touched on uh, very important part low code or no code right um, mm -hmm. uh, hardly i have seen uh, i mean in last uh, couple of intern interviews that i have been part of i hardly see anyone um, what is that coding by themselves right uh, even even the even the people who are not from uh, technical background uh, with the help of chat gpt where they were able to create a lot of things and this is i mean um, while i see it on twitter but uh, i i didn't believe it until i saw it right so the people who actually built apps out of uh, out of low code platforms or no code platforms and and are are able to make money on the, in, in the market just by launching the app uh, into the play store and, and in couple of weeks they are able to get some traction and make money i think <laughs> uh, the app logo and all the things names will be changed and the same code it put to play store right play store yes uh, so like Radha Kanti, you were telling uh, something about like uh, some uh, funny uh, things like uh, which you were involved uh, like when discussing Flutter. Yeah, yeah. Isn't funny it? in the sense, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Rishi, you were not there when I told this earlier. Uh, Prem, you were also not there. So this is this topic itself is so controversial sometimes uh, that I have known people who don't speak with each other till date because they had this discussion once. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, young young people are so passionate about the technologies they are they are actually involved with. So, I mean, uh, they, they 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 take it to the heart. So, yeah. Even uh, this actually. this same discussion many times you might have had with other people, and uh, yeah, yeah, Sairam, sorry, you are saying something. Yeah, actually, developers should not. Uh... Ah stick to any kind of a technology or these things whatever it is best yeah, for yeah, that yeah, yeah. uh use cases like it has to be used. and yes. they should be flexible enough to learn and adopt the technologies and work with those things then only they can progress much faster than sticking it to one technology and waiting for that technology to do make something happen right i mean drawing parallel from the cricket world Form is temporary, class is permanent, right? So <laughs> similarly, language is temporary. The skill learning as a skill yes. is permanent. Exactly. Yeah. Nice, nice. Very good solution, actually. There are a lot of people here uh, listening to you. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is a very good suggestion. Yes, yes. Uh, so like, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we are on. Uh, we are going to begin a uh, question uh, submitted during this uh, session by attendees. Okay, so I will put uh, questions one by one, and uh, uh, we will uh, give them give audience view about uh, their queries. So here uh, we have a question from Prem Rajiv, especially from Sairam. Uh, like, what are the main drawbacks you see in native in terms of percent adoption? Do you see uh, the flutter will take over native uh, in coming years? Okay, in terms of ad app adoption with a native application, right? It's also the problem uh, across the, uh, all the applications, right? Because when you release an application, it takes a lot of time, and also even if you make any uh, 
fix or update, right? It takes some time for the users to go for it and adopt these things, right? This, uh, there are ways to improve the app adoption by using an app update and some other features where which you can drive the percentage of the app installs, but it doesn't uh, mean that which technology to be used, right? So even uh, with the Flutter as well, it has to go with the release cycle uh, for the both applications. So both the uh, native and Flutter will have the same, right? If you are choosing something where you want to have it uh, over there, right? Something currently better one was React Native. You can choose that one. Yes. If your use case suits. Correct. Correct. Anyone would like to add anything uh, in this? Tim, would you like to add anything in this? So, uh, one of the key thing, uh, what I feel on the native part is uh, uh, native as an experience uh, right now is every, like you can get very developers very easily, but now the pointer is basically in the future. Uh, since many of the platforms are going to be cross -plat uh, cross platform basis, right? Uh, the iOS adoption is pretty high into the market, uh, and uh, you would not like to miss on the opportunity. So, if if I'm talking from the business perspective, any uh, application which I see, uh, uh, like I talk to multiple folks across the industry when they do a marketing campaign, and they only only have the Android app, uh, but yet to launch the iOS. So they see that okay. 30% of their users are uh, the people who market, uh, they market, their campaigns are hitting iOS users, but since they, are, they don't have presence there, so they are missing out on it. So I think uh, Flutter uh, or any uh, Flutter would basically be very functional in that, uh, providing the functionalities across for the iOS. Uh, and uh, that I think would definitely pick up in terms of the person adoption. And uh, people uh, learning, basically people who are moving from the native to uh, Flutter part. So obviously some time will, it will take for code to reconfigure or something like that. But once that is done, so I think it's the, uh, the rail would be pretty smooth across uh, where uh, the development across the Flutter would be take, taken up and uh, people will be easily able to build up the things. I think that streamline that shift is going to be there into the coming years, what I see. So here is next question. Uh, Anirudh, he is a React Native developer in Antino. Uh, so he faces uh, some performance issues with React Native frame rate drops, basically. So he is asking, should I have to move Flutter? Or like, will it be a smooth experience in terms of learning and development? So he is a he is a React Native developer, and he wants to move to Flutter. So anyone, because uh, like uh, he faced some problem like uh, frame rate drops and all, and sometimes like uh, there are React Native developers who approach due to some reasons like. Uh, in the video call, they don't have call kit option as a notification. So, uh, like for the like uh, lots of things, they uh, face some issues. So, like, uh, so what is your suggestion on that? Should they have to move in a Flutter or like, uh, and uh, how it will be like uh, the learning cycle? How it will be? I would like Rishi to answer this. <laughs> so, uh, for sure. I think this is, I mean, I'm moving to a new uh, platform uh, just because of the issue that's there is not viable uh, from the business point of view for sure, right? Because there'll be, uh, I mean, maybe it'll depend upon what stage of the project that you are in, right? If you are too early and if you have the independence to actually, and also time of that learning curve um, is, is, is then and maybe an easier of a choice, but if it's all if you're uh, if if you're uh, solving for a bug or if you're actually adding a new improvement to the existing app, I think it's it's I mean it's it's better to deep dive and understand where the uh, I mean um, is it because of 
is is it because of the gpu uh, um uh, or where the exactly the issue is with the frame drop and and maybe solving that uh, would be an more apt as a solution right but uh, parallelly i think there is no harm in uh, i mean uh, learning flutter and and trying to um, play around with few of the few of the apps uh, i mean building new apps there right uh, and parallelly starting that track is okay but uh, i'm sure that uh, what is that moving from react native to another for, for your app is a larger decision to be taken uh, with uh, with your clients as i mean given there is a client involved and also the team involved and all of it right so i think that's an uh, logical approach for this okay uh, we have uh, we will take one more question uh, do you think a uh, flutter skill and c++ based engine will be a good choice for augmented reality virtual reality and game development should be uh, more focus on google's v8 and c++ based chrome engine as google itself is more focused on that engine uh, more than flutter rendering engine yes uh, i mean uh, definitely because uh, ultimately it is uh, these are only a wrappers around the actual device that you have so uh, all the engines beneath are all common for every application no matter what you use so uh, i mean the way you utilize the capability of the device is the key so once the, the that is where actually the native applications from long time have been doing better because they utilize the device's capability to the best possible way so if if flutter i mean yeah flutter has been impressive in dealing i mean in using that c++ based uh, rendering engine wherein they are as you told earlier uh, 120 fps to 60 fps they have got it down because they have made the engine better so so that there is no lag or uh, the users don't feel anything while rendering so if you ask me yes definitely uh, it it can be a choice in the future and at the end of the day it is it is a hardware that is helping out uh, to render and uh, it is up to you how you use it okay uh, when it comes to the native um, ecosystem right they get more access to the kernel when it comes to the uh, the third party native third party renders right so that's where the performance improvements at one point it will be difficult to improvise further flutter and other kind of a platform but for the native they can do it a lot okay and which is not available for the flutter and this kind right exactly yes okay uh, so well i believe uh, we all had an insightful evening today uh, thank you to our speaker sairam prem rishikesh radhakan fuse for sharing their knowledge and expertise a uh, big thank big thank you to our audience as well for joining us today have a great weekend ahead thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you guys thank you, thank you. Thank you.